CCC family, it's Dawn Marie with Custom Comfy Crochet and today I'm here to show you how to make this really cool crochet pillowcase um, and it's a puppy dog pillowcase so this is definitely beginner friendly. If you're brand new to crochet like literally you've just learned how to hold a hook and use your yarn um, make a chain, you know, this might still be difficult for you. I have a beginner video below you can check out. Also, please like, share, and subscribe. Hit the notify me bell below so you can get notified of my future videos. And please like and share. Sharing helps more than anything, and I really appreciate it. So let's get into our materials. Okay, guys, so let's start off with what size pillow I use to make this cover for. That's important to know. I just got it from Walmart. I kept the thing for it. It's a 14 by 20 travel pillow. The granny squares themselves are seven by seven uh, inch granny squares. So they're about this size here. So you can see, here's my hand. Of course I have a big hand though, but that's the size of the granny square. There are three going across the top, three going across the bottom. And then when you flip it over to the other side, you have three going across the top there and three going across the bottom here, okay? So all together, you're going to need 12 granny squares with your puppy dog appliques on them. This is the scrubby yarn, you've seen it before, and I just added it to my um, basic acrylic yarn here. So the one I'm going to show you today, it is exactly the same as the scruffy ones. Um, I'm just not going to use this with it because it might just make things a little bit harder, but that's the only difference for these is I just added this with my acrylic yarn. So as I'm crocheting, I'm pulling this along using the exact same pattern, okay? You will also need um, one solid color to join these together. If you want it to look like mine, I used white. We're gonna just join them together with a single crochet. And then we're gonna join them all the way around with a single crochet, very easy. You're gonna need a darning needle. You're gonna need a pair of scissors. I'm using two different hook size. I'm using a 5.5 millimeter hook for my actual granny square itself. And then I'm using just a five millimeter hook for the dog. So I wanted the dog to be a little bit smaller so that you could see more of the granny square. I'm also using safety eyes and a safety nose. I found all of those at Walmart for a really good deal. I got a big pack of them. I've been using them for like a year now. Um, so it was a great deal. However, you do not have to use safety eyes and a safety nose. You can crochet little circles and little noses and put them on there yourself. I just like the way it looked better with those. So I'm gonna show you how to put all that on. And then of course the black yarn for the little uh, piece that goes down. And again, I did not put mouths on mine, but you can on yours. It's all up to you, okay? So that's all you're gonna need. I did use a little bit of stuffing for the inside of this um, nose piece here. Um, you can and just use yarn scraps. I did for some of this because it was just easier than pulling out my stuffing. I had a little bit of yarn and so I just stuffed it in. And so yeah, that's pretty much it. So right now what we're going to do is I'm going to get in and I'm going to show you how to do um, the granny square. Okay, so we're going to grab our 5.5 millimeter hook and um, any color that you want. Uh, again, um, I did three rows of the same color, then I changed color, did one row of double crochet, changed colors again, did one row of half double crochet, and then I ended with my white. I ended with the color that I knew was going to be on every granny square, and that's what joined it together, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to start out with a magic circle. Well, you're going to chain two, and then you're, that counts as your first double crochet. And then you're going to put another double crochet into your magic circle. Then you're going to chain two, and you're gonna put another double crochet. Then you're gonna chain two again, put two more double crochets. Then you're going to chain two again and put two more double crochets. And that's four. Um, one, two, three, four sets of two double crochets. Then you're gonna pull it tight together. 
then you're going to chain two and you're going to slip stitch to the top of your first chain two there okay just like that then you're going to chain three that counts as your first double crochet and you're going to double crochet into your next stitch here right on top of that previous double crochet then when you get to the corner you're going to put two double crochets chain two and two double crochets and then you're going to double crochet in the top of these two stitches here so right on the top of there there's one double crochet then go into the next another double crochet then in the corner you're going to put two double crochets chain two and two double crochets Then you're again going to double crochet your next two stitches. Then you're back in a corner. You're going to put two double crochets, chain two, and two double crochets. Then you're going to put a double crochet in your next two stitches. And then you're at a corner again and you're going to put two double crochets, chain two, and two double crochets. Then you're going to join to the top of your chain of three here, so right here, just like that. And now on to round three. Again, you're going to chain three. That counts as your first double crochet. And then you're going to double crochet on top of each stitch all the way down to your corner. Okay, so counting the first chain of three, that's four double crochets. Now you're at your corner. You're going to put two double crochets, chain two, and two double crochets. Then you're going to double crochet all the way across here into each stitch till you get to your next corner. And you're just gonna keep doing that all the way around. Okay, so we're on our last corner now. So we're gonna go right into there, put two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets, Then you're going to double crochet into this first stitch here, double crochet into the second, and then you're going to join to the top of your first chain of three, okay? And now we've done three rows, one, two, three, and now we're going to change colors. Now this, remember, this is just the way I did mine. You can do yours however you want. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my yarn in right here onto this loop. I'm gonna turn it over and I'm going to tie it twice and then I'm gonna work over it as I go, just to not have too many ends to work into, okay? Then I can cut off this pink, leaving enough to work in, and then I'll just work over that as I go along, okay? But I wanna make sure that this is really tight. Then I'm going to chain three, and I'm going to go right into my next stitch, and I'm going to put a double crochet And I'm going to put a double crochet in each stitch all the way to the next corner. And I'm working over these ends in the back. Then when you get to your corner, you're going to work two double crochets, chain two, and two double crochets. And then I'm going to be working in each stitch all the way across, working one double crochet till I get to my corner. When I get to my corner, I'm going to put two double crochets, 
chain two and two double crochets. So you're gonna keep doing this all the way around. And when we get close to the end, I'll meet you back up again. So we just finished our last, last stitch of our fourth row, one, two, three, four. And we're going to slip stitch to the top of our um, chain of three there. And then we're going to pull in another color. Um, but for this round, what we're going to do for our fifth round is we're going to um, do half double crochets instead of regular double crochets. So we're just going to pull this in just like we did before for when we change colors. I'm gonna work over these two. I can let that orange kind of color go. And I can go ahead and cut off these ends here where I worked those over, okay? And now I'll be working on top of those. So now we're going to chain two and we're going to put a half double crochet in each stitch going all the way to our first corner here. And in this row, I'm using a variegated yarn. Variegated yarns look really good with this and different um, when you pull them in for the different colors. Okay. Also remember that your puppy is going to be sitting in the middle here. So you're only going to see a hint of this middle color. Okay. So then when you get to a corner, you're going to do the same as before, but with half double crochets. So you're going to work two half double crochets, chain two and two half double crochets. And then you're going to go into your first stitch here and I'm still working in over these a little bit and you're going to put a half double crochet in each, sti each stitch going all the way down to your corner. So this is the same as working the other rounds. The only difference is, is that you're using the half double crochet instead of the double crochet. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up. You go ahead and do yours and I'll meet you back up in just a minute when we get done with this row. Okay, so we've just uh, almost done with our fifth row here and I'm just gonna join to the top of my chain of two with a slip stitch. And now we're going to bring in the white. And like I said, this is the color that's gonna go around whatever color you choose, it's going to be the color that goes around all to bring them in for when you join them for the pillow. Okay. Hope that makes sense. So you're just going to join these in the back, cut off so you can leave enough to work in. We're going to work over them so we don't have so much to sew. And for this one, um, you know, normally a chain of two or a chain of three counts as our first stitch. But what we're going to do for this one is we're going to chain one, but then we're also going to put a single crochet right here in the same stitch we slip stitched into. Okay. So when we come back around, we're not going to work into the slip stitch, I mean the chain one, we're going to work into the actual single crochet, but that's just to kind of anchor it there because it is a single crochet round. Okay. Then we're going to go into our next stitch and do a single crochet again, working over those ends in the back, working a single crochet in each stitch till we get to our corner. You're going to go into your corner, you're going to put a single crochet, you're going to chain two, and then you're going to put another single crochet. So that's how you do the corners for this. And then you're going to single crochet going all the way down. And every stitch putting a single crochet. And then when you get to your corner, Again, you're going to put one single crochet, chain two, and one single crochet. And then when we get close to the end here, I'll meet you back up in just a minute. Okay, so we're right here at the end and we're going to do our last two single crochets, one and two. And then we're going to slip stitch, not into our chain one, but into that first single crochet that we did. And that way there won't be any, you know, uh, gaps there. Okay. And then we can cut off this piece. You will have to work in no way around that. You can work it in with your hook or a darning needle. However you choose, 
that you'll have to work that in and then you'll also have to work this in. And we're gonna start with the circle of the uh, puppy. So we're going to make a magic circle We're going to be working in the round, but we're not going to be working with no slip stitches. So you don't necessarily need a stitch marker. You, if you're newer to crochet though, you might find it comfortable to use one, okay? So into the middle of our magic circle, we're going to put six single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, and six and then you're going to pull tight then you're going to slip stitch to your first single crochet to join and you've got the pretty little circle then you're going to chain one you're going to go right back into where you just slip stitched and you're going to put two single crochets then you're going to go into your next stitch and put two single crochets and into your next two single crochets. So you need 12 single crochets all the way around with two single crochets in each stitch. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. Then you're going to again join to your first single crochet, pull through with a slip stitch. Then you're going to chain one, and we wanna keep this circle, and I'm going to be doing a video soon on this, um, but you want to keep your circle round. You don't want it to have those octagon looks. So now we're going to start an increase with two single crochets in the beginning. So in our first stitch here, where we just slip stitched, I'm going to put two single crochets. In the next stitch, I'm gonna put one single crochet. In the next stitch, I'm going to put one single crochet. In the next stitch, I'm going to put two single crochets. In the next stitch, I'm going to put one single crochet. In the next stitch, I'm going to put one single crochet. And in the next stitch, I'm going to put two single crochets. So that's what you're doing all the way around. And because we started off with uh, two single crochets, you're gonna end on one, all right? That lets you know you did it right. And for this row, you should have 18. Then you're going to slip stitch into the top of your first single crochet, just like that. And now the last row we started round, we started with two single crochets, and now we're gonna start with one. So chain one into this first stitch here that we slip stitched into, you're going to put one single crochet, into the next, you're gonna put one single crochet, and into the next, you're gonna put one single crochet, so that's three. And then in the next stitch, you're going to put two single crochets. And then again, you're going to put one single crochet, and the next one single crochet, and the next one single crochet. And then in the next, you're gonna put two. So that's what you do all the way around. And then you're going to slip stitch to join to your first single crochet. And then you're going to chain one. This time you're going to start with two single crochets. So right there where you slip stitched, put two single crochets. And then you're gonna put one single crochet in your next four stitches. One, two, three, and four. And then in the next one, you're gonna put an increase. You're gonna put two single crochets. And again, you're going to do four single crochets across. One, two, three, and four. Then you're going to put two in the next. So we're just gonna do that all the way around. And because we started off with two, we're going to end with one. And then we're gonna go right into our first stitch and join with a slip stitch. 
So you're going to keep doing this until you get five and two. So that means you're going to start um, <clears throat> uh, with, uh, you're going to do five single crochets and an increase of two. But if you keep going the way we're doing by alternating, starting with one and starting with two, then on your last row for the five, you're gonna start with one single crochet, okay? So I want you to keep doing that all the way around like I showed you till you get to five to two and then we'll meet back up again. So we should end with 36 stitches. As you can see, we've got a beautiful little circle here. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna cut off quite a bit here because I'm gonna use this to work this uh, circle onto my granny square later, okay? And then you can just pull through just like this. And then we're gonna make the other pieces for our puppy. Now, if yours pokes out a little bit like this, looks like a disc, don't worry about it. Some will be flatter than others, depending upon how you crochet, if you crochet really tight, what kind of yarn you're using. But we're gonna sew that on so it's gonna flatten out anyway and it'll be fine, okay? So now we're gonna start with the muzzle for the dog and we're going to start with a magic circle. We're gonna do just like we did for the actual face. It's just gonna be a little bit smaller. So start out with a magic circle and then you're going to put six single crochets into the magic circle. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Then you're going to pull tight. You're going to slip stitch to your first single crochet. Okay, then you're going to chain one and you're going to put two single crochets in each stitch. Two for a total count of 12. So two single crochets in each stitch. If you ever miss a stitch and you go back and you count and it's not right, just add one at the end or take one away if you need to. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. Then you're going to slip stitch to your first single crochet to cl close. Then you're going to chain one. You're gonna go into the place where you just slip stitch. You're gonna put one single crochet, go into the next, put two single crochets, Go into the next one single crochet then go into the next and two single crochets you're going to do that all the way around and then after that row you're going to do one more row of increase you're going to start out with two single crochets and then do um, two single crochet increase in your first and then you're going to do two single crochets um, one in the next two stitches, and you're gonna keep doing that all the way around after that, okay? So I'll see you back when you get done with that round. Okay, so we finished our next round here. So we started off with six, then we had 12, then we have 18, and then we have 24. So we're gonna end by slip stitching into our first stitch here, our first single crochet, and then we're all done with the muzzle. Again, you wanna cut off, leaving enough to sew this on. To make the ears, you're going to make a slip knot and then you're going to chain 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. Then you're going to single crochet going all the way down. So into the second stitch from the hook, you're going to put one single crochet and into the next, there's two the next three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So after your 10 single crochets, you're gonna have one stitch left. And in this last stitch, you're going to do six single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Then you're going to pull tight because those six single crochets are gonna make that 
last stitch really big. And then we're gonna work over this piece right here as we go. And then we're going to put a single crochet in each one of these stitches. They can be hard to find. So I'm gonna show you real quick. So here's a stitch, 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 here's a stitch. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. We're going to do 10 single crochets going all the way back up into each stitch. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And this last one can be hard to find, just work your hook in there. Now, if for some reason you don't end up with enough stitches because those can be really hard to find, just add one to the end. You just need 10 to go across, okay? And if you end up with too many, then you need to go back and try again and make sure you didn't work too many in there, okay? Now we're going to chain one, we're going to turn our work. We can go ahead and cut off this piece that we've worked in as we went along. And when we chain one and turn our work, we're going to be working single crochets going back down. So one single crochet in each stitch, one, two, three, and you need 11, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11. And now you're gonna work two single crochets in each of your next five stitches. So go into the next one and work two. 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 And then go into the next one and work two single crochets, okay? And then we should have 10 across. One single crochet in each of your next 10 stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then our last one would be 10. And then we're gonna cut off leaving enough to uh, sew these on, these ears. And of course you need two of these, so I want you to make another one exactly like this one, and then you'll just pull through to close, right? And then the way this is gonna go on is it's going to go like this and just flip forward, just like that. and I'll show you how to put them on in just a minute. But first we're gonna do our other ear and I'll meet you back in just a second. Okay, so we have our face, we have our muzzle, and we have our ears, okay? And now we're gonna go ahead and pull out our eyes and our nose. So we're gonna go ahead and get the nose on here. So I'm just simply gonna go right through the middle of this and put my nose and this is a pretty big nose, so it's a little bit difficult to push through. It's just, uh, it's an actual dog nose. It's got even the little indentations on it that I got from the Amazon thing. So then I've got that pushed through and then I'm going to put my back on. Just like that. And then I'm going to take my darning needle and my black yarn. I'm just gonna put a small piece on here, but I'm just gonna go through very end here, make sure I've got a piece hanging in the back, and then I'm gonna go all the way down. I'm gonna try to make sure that it's lined up and it's not crooked, just like this, and pull that through. And then I'm just going to knot it off, like I said in the back, and it'll just fit on the inside there. So it's just below the middle of this, okay? So it's not centered perfectly. I want it all the way at the bottom almost. So I just went through like this, 
my work and then I'm gonna come back and go through and come back and go through, just going into each space. And as you can see, this variegated yarn, it has subtle differences in color. So it looks really cool, almost like shadows. Again, I will try to put that in the description box below. If you have a hard time making sure that things are centered, I would suggest using some stick pins. As you can see, I needed one for mine. <laughs> I'm just gonna take about a handful of it. It's just what was closest to me. And like I said, you don't need a lot of stuffing. And I'm just gonna stuff that in here. Just remember to try to use a lighter color with lighter colors um, so that, you know, if you used a dark color, it would poke out, you know? And so then you would just keep sewing after you got everything back in there. And if you do not want to use yarn, you can definitely use stuffing. Like I said, I used it for some of mine. Okay. And then what you can do, if it's too far, you can puff it out like this using the end of your darning needle. You can use your fingers, get it to poke out. And there you go. You've got the muzzle for the dog. And in the back, all I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this piece and then I'm going to take this piece and I'm gonna go ahead and knot them together. This is going to be on the back of your granny square, so it's okay for these to be knotted, but if you're not comfortable with that, you can work them in. When I was talking about being careful joining stuff, that was for the granny square because it is a pillow and it will get moved a lot, all right? So we've got that done and now we're going to put on our ears and after we put on our ears, we'll put on our eyes because the ears help you determine where the eyes go. So I'm going to go ahead and put this onto my darning needle. It's already kind of like it should be. It's already curling that way. So right here where we had this, I'm going to count over one, two, three. So right here at the third one, I'm sorry, I'm gonna count over two, one, two. And right here at this third one is where I'm gonna line this up, okay? And we're gonna take up one, two, three, four stitches, all right? And then I'm gonna start working in the back here and going through to the front. And these four stitches. just like that. And then this is going to lay like this. So what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to go turn this over, holding this exactly where I want it. And then I'm going to, and then this piece right here, sticking up from where, so I'm just gonna pull a little tighter. So I'm gonna work my way down to where I want this. So I'm gonna go through all of these little places here until I get down to where I need to work through. And then you can pull it back out again. And then I'm gonna go right through the front here and right out the other side, okay? And then I'm gonna do that one more time. Just make sure it's secured. And then we have the ear there exactly where we want it to be. And then we're going to do the other side. I'm gonna let this hang because I'm gonna join it with the other one. Remember, it doesn't matter what our back looks like because um, uh, this one did not fold the way that it normally would, so I'm having to fold it, but just like this. And I'm going to put my darning needle on and then I'm going to count over one, two, three, and into this space right here, into this fourth, the second place. So we did one, two from here, one, two from here, okay? And then I'm going to go right through in those four spaces, just like we did on the other side. So I'm just pulling through and going back.
just like this. Then I might catch that last loop and pull it through. And then just like we did on the other side, I'm gonna hold this down right about here. And then I'm gonna turn it over and I'm gonna work my way down to the side of that. So where I like to put the eyes is right where these the sides of the ears are. So pointing right from here down. So one, two, and that second row down is where I'm going to put this first eye. And then counting down from here, one and two. This is where I'm going to put my second eye. Just like this. And that's how I get them. And then I'm gonna put the backs on. And now we have a completed little puppy dog. And I'm gonna show you how to sew this onto your granny square, okay? So this is the granny square we have right here. The way that I did this was, is I wanted this to come right down to the end of the third row, just like that. So as you can see, um, you will see some of the pink poking through, but not a lot. So in between the third and fourth row is kind of where I placed the puppy dog. So you can put yours wherever you want to. And then um, you can use a uh, stick pin to hold it in place, but I'm just going, I don't have any, so I'm just going to leave it like this and try to hold it. But it does help to put some stick pins so that it stays exactly where you want it to stay in the middle of your work. But literally all you're going to do is go in and out just like this, going all the way around And when you get to the bottom where your ear is, you can literally just fold it up a little bit and work right under there and go all the way around. So that's literally all you're gonna do is just go in and out all the way around. So when we get done with that, I'll meet you back in just a minute. Okay, so I have my puppy um, sewn on to my granny square. As you can see, it's not perfectly in the center because I did not use my stick pins, but that's okay. I still think it's beautiful. So that's exactly how you do that. Um, and then this is what I was talking about. Even though this is gonna be to the back of your work, even it is important that you work these ends in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to work this in probably even more than three times because I don't want my, um, my puppy dog applique to come off basically because pillows are used a lot. They're played with a lot, they get sat on. So you just wanna make sure that you work this in really well. So I'm even gonna go back through portions of the puppy just to make sure, but without ruining the front of my work, okay? So I'm just gonna keep pulling through there and then I can cut off. And again, I wanna make sure that I work this piece in as well, okay? And then you're all done with your puppy granny square. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to put these together. And so let's say this was one and two and we needed our three across. So we're going to pull this together and we're going to start right after our corner here. So right, right here's our corner, right here's our corner. So into this first stitch of our corner here, right there, we're going to bring in our yarn just like this. You're going to be leaving a piece. Every time you bring your yarn in, you're gonna leave a piece and you need to make sure to work that in. So then you'll chain one and then you'll put a single crochet right there where you just joined. And then you're just gonna line it up and single crochet to bring it together. So you're gonna go under this one and holding them together, then you're gonna go under this one. And then this, and then this. So just single crochet all the way down. And that's all you're going to do to bring these all together. So easy, so much fun, and that's it. 
You have a little bit of a raised thing here, but I still think it looks neat because it looks really patchworky. If you have any questions or anything, um, don't hesitate to ask below in the YouTube comments section, but I know a lot of people aren't um, comfortable with that. So if you're not, I have a Gmail, you could uh, get me over there. You can also find me on TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. And I encourage you to go over there and follow me in all of those places. Um, that really helps a bunch too. I also upload a lot of these videos onto TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook as well. Um, but yeah, and please show me your finished work. I love that. People send me pictures all the time. They send them in my Gmail. They send them um, on Facebook, on Instagram. Um, and I really just love seeing all of your pictures. A lot of times, if I have your permission, I will actually post them on my site. So yeah, don't hesitate to do those things. I love it. And I'll see you again soon for another fun project. Happy crocheting. Bye-bye.